Good morning, everybody. Uh, brothers and sisters in Dhamma, Datuk Sri, you're in the room, uh, Brother Niwan, Chion, Brother Lai, and uh, all our friends in the Dhamma. Today, we are starting our first Zoom meeting with, uh, and uh, this is our first attempt after the COVID-19 uh, virus to come online with BGF. And uh, we are doing the first run-in with uh, Brother Ku Niwan because uh, He's a young man with uh, more experience with uh, IT, IT savvy. So uh, what we'll do this morning is uh, we will start off with the puja, and after which we will introduce Brother Niwan, and then we'll pass the screen to Brother Niwan. So throughout this meeting, all of you are muted, and uh, I've set it up such that uh, uh, kindly keep yourself muted unless you want to ask questions. So when you're asking questions, you unmute yourself. And uh, after that, you keep yourself muted again. Is, is that okay with everybody? So uh, there's also a chat box inside here. Right at the top there, there's a chat box where you can uh, type in your questions. You, if you don't want to ask uh, questions online, you can just uh, type in your chat box. Okay. And uh, so let us start with the puja. I will share the screen on the puja and I, I will lead the puja. And what we'll do is uh, the rest of us is. Okay, so the rest of us will just uh, chant yourself, but uh, keep, keep yourself muted. Otherwise, there'll be a lot of echo. Okay, so there was for a while. Hey, Dato Sri, you're in Bhutan, ah? Dato Sri, you're, you're, you're in Bhutan, you're, uh, you're calling in from Bhutan, are you? <laughs> Can't hear you, Dato Sri, you're muted, that's okay, later. <laughs> Hold on, give me a minute. Hi, Chi Sing. Hi, Chi On. Angeline, good to see you. <laughs> Hello, Niwan. Hello, good morning. Wow. Okay, okay, good to see you, huh? so, okay uh, keep, keep yourself muted. Let's uh, start the Buddha Puja. So we will do a very short Puja. We start with Namotasa, then we go to the uh, taking refuges and the five precepts and we, we finish there and there. Okay, so let us uh, begin the Puja. Okay. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Buddham saranang gachami, Dhammang saranang gachami, Sankhang saranang gachami, Tutiampi buddham saranang gachami, Tutiampi dhammang saranang gachami, Tutiampi sankhang saranang gachami, Tatiam pi buddhang saranang gachami. Tatiam pi dhammang saranang gachami. Tatiam pi sankhang saranang gachami. Panati pata veramani sikha padang samadhyami. 
अधीन दन्न वेरमणि सिखा पदं समाधियामि कामी सुमिचाचारा वेरमणि सिखा पदं समाधियामि मुसावदा वेरमणि सिखा पदं समाधियामि सुरामेरय मचा पमादाथाना वेरमणि सिखा पदं समाधियामि With this of love and compassion, I purify my action. With selfless giving, I purify my action. With moderation and contentment, I purify my action. With truthful words, I purify my speech. With clear mindfulness and calmness, I purify my thought. Sabe sata sukihontu. May all beings be happy. Okay, before we introduce Brother Niwan, uh, let's have a few uh, basic ground rules because I think this is the maybe the first time on Zoom for some of us. So to facilitate a smooth sharing experience, we would very much like to everyone support to observe the following practices. During the talk, all audios will be muted by me. I have left it. Uh, you can unmute yourself if you wish to ask questions. Now, kindly raise your hands if you wish to ask a question and your audio will be unmuted. Now, in case I don't see your, your hands, you may also unmute yourself. You may also type in your questions in the chat box and uh, we will be limiting the screen share to the MC and the speaker. Okay, and uh, towards the end, then we open up to everyone. Okay, so with this, I'd like to introduce the speaker. Today's talk is dealing with difficult people with Brother Kuni Wen. Now, this session will be divided into two slots. From now till 10, 11, 10, we have a 40-minute session where we will handle the, the basic talk with Brother Ni Wen. And uh, after that, we'll have a short break for 10 minutes and we'll come back at uh, 11.20 for the Q&A or interactive session with Brother Ni Wen. Okay, so the links are in the link you provide, uh, which was provided earlier, okay? Now, a short introduction. So with this COVID-19 situation, all of us are confined at home and we like it or not, we have to be around with our family members or close ones. Now, and uh, being, getting along with people will be very, very important now. So some of people we meet may be very difficult people. Who are difficult people? Can we do without them? In most situations, we can't and we don't have much of a choice. This talk gives us tips and techniques on how to live and deal with different kinds of people and how to make the best of the situations facing them. Now, who is Brother Niwan? Brother Niwan is a self-taught music composer and he founded the Buddhist music group, the iGems. He co-produced the album, cradled in Buddha's arms. Brother Niwan holds a Master's of Business Administration from the Maastricht School of Management. Currently, he is a senior consultant at THC Consulting Sundaram Brahat, where he manages various consulting projects in the area of organizational development and facilitates emotional intelligence development programs. Brother Niwan's uh, Dharma interest is in the area of Dharma practice in personal, family, and professional life, using modern emotional intelligence tools with time-saving, time-tested traditional Buddhist teachings and values. So with this, uh, let us pass the screen to Brother Niwan. Okay, Brother Niwan, okay, you're uh, on. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Brother Bobby. Um, 
I will try my best uh, to speak uh, in, a, in a clearer, uh, slower voice so that everybody can hear me. I know it's a bit of a challenge with audio, but uh, if you feel you want to have clearer audio, like Brother Bobby, put on your earphones or headphones. Um, so uh, uh, thank you, uh, Bobby, for uh, calling me last week and uh, inviting me to share uh, the Dhamma this morning. I think this is, uh, uh, to be honest, this is my first time doing a, a sharing, a full-length sharing on Zoom. So uh, uh, do forgive, sometimes I may uh, have some technical issues also myself. Uh, I'm not very technical savvy, to be honest. Uh, but anyway, I'll do my best. Um, so before I get into the topic, I think I just want to mention a few things. It's all right for you all to have your videos on. Uh, so if you want... Because sometimes if I speak to the screen, I like to see some faces. If, uh, unlike the other day when I did the Facebook live show, uh, I don't see anybody else. Uh, a little bit nervous. Uh. But, uh, so if I see some good friendly faces here, then maybe uh, I will be less, uh, you know, less nervous and maybe more relaxed with you all. So uh, feel free to, to, to show your face if you want to. Otherwise, it's fine. Uh, if you feel you want to say something at any time, just like Brother Bobby say, it's okay. Just unmute yourself and just interrupt me. I, I, in my talks, I always say, it's okay. You can interrupt me anytime. You can, you can also, if you don't feel like sitting in a very straight and stiff position, it's all right to, to, to lie down or do something else. Anyway, you're at home, so nobody knows. So uh, it's okay, right? But more importantly, I think today is for Dhamma learning. And I think in this period of, if, of our MCO, our lockdown, it seems that everybody now is hungry for Dhamma. Uh, ironic at this time where we have, um, you know, now that, you know, it, it, instead of feeling more stress uh, or we want to get more Dhamma and somehow we go chase after all these streaming uh, 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 platforms for Dhamma sharing because we are hungry for Dhamma. And I think there's something fundamental, whether it's lockdown, no lockdown, we all want Dhamma, but this MCO period has given us this, has somehow put us to a time where we don't have much to do, that in the weekend especially. So what do we do? We tune in, all right? And we tune in and, and to, instead of watching a TV, we say, can I get something and hear something different? So hopefully I can share something with you today. And uh, let me just put up a screen now. Uh, all right. Can you all see the screen? Okay. Uh, okay, now with the screen on, I can't see you all already. So let me just uh, hang on. Huh? Okay, it's okay. So let me just uh, put up the screen. So the topic is uh, actually I added the word dukkha here because I think dukkha is dealing with difficult people. Uh, this is quite important to understand because sometimes when we look at people, it's not, just the, it's not just dealing with the difficulty, but it's also the fact that that is what we call as dukkha. <laughs> okay, just let me demonstrate to you in a moment what I mean. Lah. So uh, I think, thanks Bobby for doing the introduction. I mean, this is just a little bit more about myself. Uh, just to add on the, to my CV, I think uh, this is the latest development. I am also now the head uh, for the panel of Programs for Advancement in Dhamma Leadership under the Cradle uh, Center for Research and Dhamma Leadership Enhancement and initiative under the Theravada Buddhist Council. So this is something quite new. We started last year. Uh, we are doing more leadership development for the Buddhist community. And uh, I think you, the rest you can see for yourself has been already introduced to all of you here. So just to add on about my personal profile. Uh. All right, let's move to the topic. So let's start off by saying that in life, whether we are at home, whether we are at work, whether we are in BGF, whether we are anywhere at all, we need to deal with people. And every day there are many, many, many parties that we need to deal with. For example, I mean, you can name them yourself. You need to deal with your spouse, yeah? Your husband, your wife, that's quite primary, those who are married. You have to see them. You have to deal with them every day. Sometimes it's pleasant, sometimes not so pleasant. Okay? Uh, you have to deal with your relatives. Yeah? People who are your relatives. They, yeah, they, sometimes the people say you can choose your friends. You can't choose your relatives. You know, they're always there. And whether you like them or not, you have to deal with them. 
you need to deal with your parents, those of you who still have your parents around, uh, you need to handle them, uh, face them, sometimes interact with them. Siblings, those of you who are siblings, your, your brother, your sister, and so on, these are the people you deal with every day. These are the people close to us. These are families, yeah, family members, and somehow or other you deal with them. Mainly not every day, but from time to time you need to somehow face them. Your boss, those who are working, you need to deal with your boss. Uh, this is almost like an everyday affair. Uh, lockdown or no lockdown, a boss is a boss, you have to deal with them. Uh, customer, those of you who are in the front line, you need to deal with your customers. You need to deal with the, the, the people who come to you, you know, buy things from you. Your staff, you have to handle people who are your staff. You are the people, your subordinates, you need to deal with them. Your friends, uh, from time to time, you need to handle some of these people with your friends who come to you with requests, uh, ask you for help, ask you for things, ask you for information, you have to entertain them, right? Uh, WhatsApp group members are people you deal with on a daily basis. I think this is a phenomenon we have today. Somehow or other, these are the people you encounter and these are the people somehow you uh, like it or not, they are there and you are also there. And sometimes, sometimes you see the postings, you also get emotional hijacking. Uh, sometimes it's pleasant, they forward things, but sometimes they over forward things. Uh, we have this um, phenomenon today, we call them the serial forwarders. They get one piece of information and they forward, they get one piece of information, they forward, and they do a broadcast to all the respective WhatsApp groups. And you find that they are uh, somehow flooding you with all this information. You get very irritated with them. This is something, uh, we, I, I have, we have a term, we call them the serial forwarders. So these are these are not serial killers or serial forwarders. Okay, so you need to, but you need to deal with them. Uh, unless you want to exit the group, you still want to be in the group. You somehow see that, uh, yo, why are you going to forward such a thing? Why are you going to say such a thing? Why are you going to do such a thing then, right? Uh, very, very interesting in times like this. Your neighbors, uh, I think MCO period, uh, some of you see your neighbors or so more because they are at home. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, somehow or other, you, you have to deal with them. And, and also your society people, people in BGF, people in SJBA, people in BUPS. Uh, and uh, even today, we don't physically see them, but we see them over Zoom meetings or live meetings or whatever online platform. You also need to deal with them. So I just want to give the picture that at the end of the day, when you look at it, you are not separated from the world. We are connected with the public, with the people around us. We have all these people that we somehow like them or don't like them, we need to deal with them. So as a result, somehow or other, there are situations where we feel that it is easy with some people, sometimes with some others, not so easy. So how, how do we handle this? So the question is, who are these difficult people? Who are considered difficult people? Why are they difficult? And for this, I'd like to just pause for a while, maybe give one minute or so. Any one of you can give me an uh, uh, share with me an idea. Who are considered difficult people? Why are they difficult? Give me one or two examples, please. I welcome one or two responses. Not too long, just a short sharing. What you consider as very difficult people and what are, why are they considered difficult? If you want to speak, you just unmute yourself and just tell, you know. Anyone? Okay, uh, somebody say something, please, so that it's, it's, a, it's a lot more, I just want to get a response, very quick one, come. Yes. No response? Ah. Brother Niwan, there's some, some yes. comments in the chat group. People yes, who are please, stubborn. Uh, please read them out because uh, I, I, I can't, I, I'm not accessing my chat now. Can you read them out to me? People who are stubborn, siblings okay. that are self centered. 
Okay. Yeah, those, those any two. More? Okay, stubborn, self-centered. Uh, any more response? If anybody can put in the People chat. People who only say. think of themselves. Think only okay. of themselves. So stubborn, selfish, think of only of themselves. All right. Uh, okay, so... Right, so these are these are maybe uh, people who are difficult in us, but there are also some other examples of people who are difficult. Sometimes some people are difficult because people who think they are other. always right. Okay, that's another one. They think they are always right. They are, you know, and they could be they are arrogant. They are they are they are, they are all that. They are. Any more response? Let me just look at the chat. Uh, not considerate. Uh, I think you're always wrong. Okay, good. Uh, thank you for your responses. And that's, that's good. Uh, but I think there's more than that. Because sometimes people who, who are all, uh, somehow or other not only very unpleasant, sometimes people are difficult. You know why? I have encountered this situation. Sometimes people are difficult just because you look at their face or so you don't like them already. They are difficult simply because they are themselves. You look at the face, you already don't like that. You look at their face, you find that that is a very difficult person. And sometimes it need not be anything of, the, of their doing, you know, just because they are like that. Yeah? So, so the question is, yeah, what do they have in common? Right? What do they have in common? There's something in common. And that common thing is not about them as much as it is about us. It's about me and how I handle those situations. So I want to bring you back to this overall big picture, back to reality. But before that, our normal response to people will be what? You know, normal response to people are, look at this. Yeah? It could be one response. It could be like this. Yeah, And sometimes we feel like killing them, right? Some people, you just feel how nice if we don't have them in the world, right? That, that is something we see. And uh, and you feel as if they are wasting our time. Yeah? So some people, you feel like, don't waste my time. Can they just don't exist? Can they just don't be here? You know, uh, so, and, and so on. And, and of course, we get into issues where we feel very frustrated, very uh, angry, and sometimes exhausted even. So dealing with situations like this drain us, yeah? drain our energy, drain our attention, and it's makes it very, very tiring. So we have to acknowledge that that happens. And that's because the reality of life is what the Buddha said. It's dukkha. And that's reality. And that's something we need to acknowledge when we have difficult people we deal with. It's not, sometimes it's not because uh, it's, it's them. It's because life is like this. Let's examine this. Huh? Okay. According to the Buddha, yeah, the noble truth of dukkha, birth is dukkha, aging dukkha, death is dukkha, sorrow, lamentation, pain, and all that are dukkha. This first part of dukkha, actually, there's nothing much we can do. We are all born. We all need to age. We all need to fall sick. We all need to die. This is the, the fundamental, we call it uh, ultimate reality. Is We can't do anything about this. But the next thing is quite interesting. The Buddha goes on to say one thing further. Association with the beloved, in other words, being with people we dislike, uh, that is dukkha. Yeah, being with someone we don't like, having to deal with that person is dukkha. So when we look at this, it's actually, it's not, it's, it's quite natural that we have these feelings towards people. Uh, separation from the loved one, not being with the people we like, that is dukkha. And I think that's something we experience today in the, during the MCO is because sometimes we are separated from the people we want to be with. And it, this, in this situation, we have not much of a choice. And that's Dukkha. And we experience that. We somehow experience the fact that we are separated you know, from certain people. We can't deal with them. Um, yesterday, we have a friend of, of ours who, whose mother uh, passed away. And uh, she had to, uh, you know, uh, the mother passed away and the, the, the burial plot for the is in Madhubahad, in Klang Valley. And uh, she had to get the, 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 the remains to, to Batubahat from here. But during this MCO, apparently they can't get the, um, 
the permit. Uh, it's, it's not easy to get the permit. They, they went to the police and the police said, no, you have to cremate here. <laughs> which, uh, which according to her, she says, hey, how can we already have a burial plot? It's already planned and uh, all that. And, and uh, that is already creating a lot of pain and suffering. And again, that, that, in that situation, who is a very difficult person? The police officer become very difficult, right? Uh, but of course, uh, they managed to do it at the end. They, they got the, uh, the, uh, some connections, they, they made some appeals, and finally, they got the, the permit to, to, to bring the remains back to Batu Pahat for the funeral, for the burial, and before they, you know, they call it you know, the, the last rites. So this, this as, uh, separation from the loved one is quite real, eh? uh, uh, not being with the people we like. But I want to look at the bold one, yeah? association with the people we don't like. That's Dukkha. And this is very profound understanding because people are difficult because of the nature of how things are. Yeah? Dukkha is not because, uh, I mean, we, 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 we can say that it's because they, it is natural. Yeah? It's natural. It's not our fault. It's not their fault. It's not the fault of anyone. It's just a natural part of things. It's because of causes and conditions. The person that we look at, the person is very difficult. We say they're so self-centered, they're so selfish, they don't they're, 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 they the only think about themselves. Are they have the intention to be like this? Probably not. Yeah? They are just who they are. And we so happen are there. You know, so we, we need to understand this. So by understanding this, we know that it's not within our control. And I think just to emphasize that it is not our choice. When we are faced with a difficult person, it's not something we can control. It's something we have to somehow deal with. That's why we say dealing with. Uh, if you have a choice, you would not deal with the person. You would, uh, you would ignore the person, escape from that person, uh, exit the WhatsApp group if you have a choice. But sometimes, a lot of times, we don't have that choice. We have to deal with them. And it happens because it is causes and conditions. And by understanding this, we know that it is because of this thing called non-self. Yeah? So it is not something we, we have control over. Uh, we can't say, please don't be so difficult. We can't say, can you not behave like that? We can't say, even ourselves. Uh, I wish I, I'm not like that. You can't do that. We are conditioned by our past. We are conditioned by the choices we make in life. Somehow or other, uh, we don't have that control. And it is futile. It is unreasonable to want to control the situation. We just can't. And that we have to acknowledge. We can't control situations. Okay? We don't have control. All right. So when we are faced with a difficult person, just acknowledge this. It's not my choice. <laughs> it's not that I want him to be there. Yeah? It's not I want her to, 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 to be like that. Yeah? It's not up to me. And this is very profound understanding, right? So let me just say that by understanding this, first of all, we don't have to get so upset. Yeah? It's not our fault. It's not the fault of the person. But how we respond, uh, that one we have a choice. And I think uh, I'd like to bring your attention to one sutta called the Sala Sutta or the arrow sutta, the simile of the two arrows. Uh, in this simile, the Buddha mentioned that we are, uh, imagine uh, if you are hit or you're struck by one arrow and it strikes you, you know, it hits you, let's say it hit you in the, in, the, in the chest. And then after that, Immediately after that, the second arrow struck you and hit you also. So how many pain do you feel? You felt the first pain, and then you felt the second pain. So in the things we encounter every day, we also experience two times the feeling of either pain or uh, irritation or annoyance or whatever. First thing is we saw the person and we heard something the person say. And he said to you, Niwan, you're an idiot. Okay, that's already the first arrow shot at you. Okay, you feel it already. Okay? Then you go on to think about the next thing. Why he called me idiot? How come uh, he is the idiot? I'm not the idiot. How dare he call me the idiot? And how many times 
have you now been called an idiot? The first time they call you idiot is the first time, but subsequently you call yourself an idiot five times. <laughs> uh, this is the example given by Ajahn Brahm. Very, very interesting because that means the first one already hit you. You feel it already. And now you are hit by the second arrow immediately because you think about it, you respond to it by thinking and reacting to the, to the stimulus that has been given to you. You saw a WhatsApp message by one of your group members, all right? And he says something very unpleasant there, okay? He says something very, very, very bad there. You already saw it already. You heard, yeah? Because you saw it, you felt something. Ah, this is not nice. This is uh, very bad. I'm very irritated, okay? But subsequently, we keep thinking about it. How dare he say that? Why is he like that? He shouldn't be like that. Uh, how come he, he, he is so stupid? Uh, he's an idiot. And, and that itself means the second arrow strike you and you feel the pain two times. So when we deal with difficult people, a lot of times the person is there, he is annoying, he is irritating, he's very, uh, uh, you know, we can call him, uh, sometimes we call him an asshole, you know. But the, that, that one we really reacted first time, but we keep on thinking about it. The next one is we react in that way. And that's the second arrow. And we feel it even stronger than the first arrow. Yeah? The first pain is only the first pain. The second pain, it keeps perpetuating again and again and again. Sometimes we lose sleep over these things. Our heart beats faster. We get very short breaths. And uh, not only that, we, we cannot sleep. We cannot eat properly. Ah, we suffer twice. So choosing how we respond, that one we have control. We can't control the dukkha. We can't control what happens, but we have control how we respond. And that the Buddha has mentioned, there's a simile of the two arrows. Yeah? It just hits us twice. So we can choose about the second one. We don't have to, yeah? first arrow hit really better run away. Yeah? Don't, don't, don't let the second arrow strike you again. Okay? So, uh, yeah? and this Stephen Covey, uh, see, even though Stephen Covey, yeah, he, the, the writer of the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, He's not a Buddhist, but he understands uh, Dharma very well. Uh, he says, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space lies our freedom and power to choose our response. In those choices lie our growth and our happiness. And he understands this very clearly. The stimulus is the person said something, he did something, or he showed up. He shouldn't show up today, but somehow he showed up. Now, how I respond, there is a space. And that space lies our freedom to choose how we respond. And it looks simple enough, but if you look at it, a lot of time it's not so simple. Why is it not so simple? Because we have emotions. Because we are people mm. and we understand this. Okay? So, and the Buddha said quite similar thing here. If, uh, according to, these are the Buddha's words. Uh, let's look at them. In the Majima Nikaya, one of the sutta huh, says, I mentioned this. When others address you, their speech may be timely or untimely, true or untrue, gentle or harsh, connected with good or with harm, spoken with a mind of loving kindness or in a mood of hate. When people speak to you, you cannot control how they speak to you. They can be gentle, they can be harsh. They can say true things, they can say untrue things. They may say it at the right time or the wrong time. They may be harmful or unharmful. That one, you have no control. It will come to you. You know, you have ears, you should hear them one. You know, you cannot say, please don't say those things. You can tell them, like, you know, please don't say those things to me. Please, sir. Uh, but somehow or other, they will somehow, you know, it's not up to you to control what people say to you. But the Buddha goes on to say the next thing. It says, Herein, uh, monks uh, or bhikkhus, uh, you should train thus. Our minds remain unaffected, and we shall utter no bitter words. We shall abide compassionate for their welfare with a mind of loving kindness, never in a mood of hate. So, this is what the Buddha said to us. And I find this excerpt here from the Sutta very interesting and also very inspiring because. Here, the Buddha says, look, we don't have to do anything. We are already empowered. 
our minds will remain unaffected and we shall utter no bitter words. Abide in compassion. Whether anybody say anything whatsoever, just abide compassionate for their welfare with a mind of loving kindness and all that. That's our choice to make. So the first paragraph above, not our choice. Second one, we make a choice how we want to respond. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, let's pause here for a while and see. Uh, let me look at some of you, what you're saying here in the chat. Uh, if there is anything. Oh, some of the slides got lines. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, let me, let me, let me uh, exit. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know what happened to the red lines, but uh, somehow it's there. So uh, if you can just bear with it because I don't know what happened seriously. So, okay, um, let's go back to this. So uh, how do we then remove resentment or annoyance? Uh, what can we do yeah, to remove this resentment or annoyance to the people or to the situations around us? Uh, let me look at this. Uh, so there are, a, there are a few tips here that the Buddha provided. And I think this is very, very interesting because this sutta has a lot of profound message. And this is from the uh, uh, Anguttara Nikaya 5, the book of five, uh, and very direct lessons from the Buddha. And one thing I like about this sutta is the Buddha did not preach. In fact, this sutta was not given by the Buddha. This, this, this teaching was given by uh, the Venerable Sariputta. Uh, the Venerable Sariputta was the foremost of the Buddha's disciple as far as wisdom are concerned. And in some of the suttas, actually, they attribute the sutta to the Dhamma talk given by Venerable Sariputta, uh, one of the chief disciples. And uh, in fact, a lot of the suttas as, uh, that Sariputta has spoken has been put on par with the word of the Buddha. And that is quite, quite a, that means he's held in very high esteem. So, and of course, whatever Sariputta mentioned, in the sutta is also what the Buddha has would have said to him or to the rest of us. Let's take a look at this sutta. Very interesting with all a lot of imagery. So I invite you all to use your imagination quite a bit here because it has a lot of visual similes that we can use here. Okay, first example, how do you remove resentment, annoyance, ill will, bitterness towards another person? This is something we can do. Now, what if the person's bodily behavior is impure, but his speech is pure? Uh, what does it mean? Some people, their actions are not so good, but somehow their speech is all right. Uh, uh, you can tell their, their, their behavior, their action conduct is maybe not so skillful, but somehow, okay, I know sometimes they say the right thing. All right? So this is somebody quite difficult, isn't it? I mean, you look at this kind of people, you look at them and says. I get very irritated with them. I get very frustrated. Why is he like that? Okay, and this is how the Buddha said we can remove resentment, hatred towards this person. This is what we can do. Now, the, the story goes, suppose a mendicant, a bhikkhu, a monk, wearing rag robes, sees a rag by the side of the road, and hold it down with the left foot, spread it out with the right foot, tear out what was intact and take it away with them. Uh, this is something, uh, uh, I mean, in, during the Buddha's time, the monks had to uh, sew their own robes. They make their own robes. So they wear rags. And a lot of time, the way they find their raw materials, they don't buy them. Uh, in those days, uh, some of the practices, they actually had to scavenge, you know, find the robes, find the cloth, rags from the roadside. People, uh, things people throw away. Or they go to the cemetery where they find a uh, cloth they can use. But of course, you can't use everything, isn't it? The parts of the cloth that somehow the, 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 it's got holes, it's too dirty. So what they do? They tear out the part that is good and just ignore the rest that is not good. They throw the rest away. That's what they do. So in the same manner, you should ignore that person's impure behavior and focus on their pure behavior. In other words, Look at only the good side when you deal with that person. Don't look at all the things you don't like about them. If there's one thing you like about them, maybe they say certain things which is good. Okay, let's deal with them from that angle. Focus on what is common, what is good, rather than focus on what is not so good. And that's how you deal with difficult people. 
you don't deal with them by going head on with them and 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 and, and uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, calling out their, their not so good side. Yeah, they are then you are amplifying the, the not so good side. It's like taking the the bad robes or the bad rags. You take the, the, the not so good thing and you you throw away the good thing. For what? So you just want to look at the good thing, right? And and focus on their pure behavior. And that's what the Buddha has mentioned to us. We can do this. It is something we are empowered to do. All right. So the next one. Next one is also another similar example, but this time, speech is impure, actions are pure. Uh, of course, most of the time when the speech is not pure, the action is almost so pure. But then again, this is just another way of looking at it. Some people, they, are, they may not say a lot of good things, but the way they conduct themselves may be all right. They may, be, uh, they may not say, they, they are, you know, some people's speech are very rough. You know, look at them, they are, they are very... They very um uh, we call it we say it's, oh why is this one educator one here you know he is saying things so rudely, but then you look at their actions they're quite okay, and then you deal with them, and how do you do this? Again another story. Suppose there was a lotus pond covered with moss and aquatic plants, then along comes a person struggling in the oppressive heat, weary, thirsty, and parched. They plunge into the lotus pond sweep apart the moss and aquatic plants, drink from their cup tents and be on their way. At the end of the day, you just want to drink the water. So you move aside all the things that is undrinkable and only drink what is drinkable. So it's quite similar to the previous example. Yeah. So in the same way, you just ignore the person's impure behavior and focus on what is good about them. Yeah. So there's a Malay uh, peribahasa by saying, uh, buang yang keruh. Ambil yang journey. And that's the same wisdom that's being shown here. You look at only the, the part you want to take, you ignore the rest of it. When you deal with people who are difficult, look at what can be dealt with. You can't deal with everything about a person. You can only deal with the part that can be dealt with. And that's the positive part. Focus on the positive part about the person. Deal with the positive part about the person. Don't deal with the negative part or the part that is not so pure about the person because that's impossible. You can't do any of it. You just have to focus on what is positive. That's how you deal with people. Yeah? Focusing on the whole thing of the person is not wise. You just focus on the part that you can deal with. The rest that you cannot deal with, don't deal with it. You know, you, you, it's not your business to deal with the other part of the person that is not. A lot of time our, our mistake is we tend to look at the whole thing. And we say, that person is so difficult. He is like that. He is terrible and all that. We are already labeling the whole thing. But that's not helpful. We need to look at the person from an objective point of view. He is impure here. He is not so good here. But he is good here. Let's deal with that one that I can deal with. That's the wise part. Same thing when you deal with your children. When you deal with your spouse. When you deal with your boss. You don't look at the whole thing. My boss is a terrible tyrant. <laughs> but is he always a tyrant? Occasionally, he helped me learn something. So I deal with that part that helps me learn something. That's another example. Okay, next one. Uh, very interesting story next. What if, uh, this one is even more difficult. The person's bodily and speech are impure. Uh, that means uh, you look at him, uh, taboli you know? he is really uh, terrible. His actions are not pure. His speech also terrible. Yeah? So how to deal with such people? Uh, but this person sometimes gets an openness and clarity of heart from time to time. What does it mean? Some people, uh, their speech not so good, their behavior not so good, but sometimes you notice they have clarity of mind. Occasionally, you'll find that they have a little bit of compassion. They have a little bit of kindness in them once, somehow or other. Very little, occasional, but they do have them. Yeah? So some people are like that. Yeah? Um, I, I, I do notice I, I have a few uh, friends of mine. I just dislike dealing with them. Yeah? But, and that's one particular one I, I remember, one of my, my friends. I just avoid him a lot of times. But I notice from time to time I see him doing things on Facebook and he's okay. Yeah? When he deals with some other people, he's all right. There's some clarity there. Some, so I still, it's okay. Yeah? 
So what do you do with such people? Again, another story. Suppose there was a little water in a cow's hoof print. Okay, it means there's a puddle of water, huh? a puddle of water on the, on the ground. Then along comes a person struggling in the oppressive heat, weary, thirsty, and parched. We might think, this little bit of water is in a cow's hoof print. It's in a puddle. It's a puddle of water. If I drink it with my cupped hands or a bowl, I'll stir it and disturb it, making it undrinkable. Okay? So why don't I get down on all fours and drink it up like a cow? Then be on my way. That's what they do. Very interesting, isn't it? In other words, in that way, ignore the person's, all his conduct, his behavior, his speech, his body, and just focus on occasionally this one. He's got a bit of kindness. He's got a bit of clarity. He's okay sometimes. I only look at that one and deal with that. If you look at this simile, very interesting is you don't have to use the same way to drain water. All right? What you want, your problem is you're thirsty. You want to drink water. The problem is drinking water. The problem is what, uh, is uh, not using a bowl. If I use a bowl, I use a cup, I'll, st I'll make the water very, very muddy, very uh, dirty. Yeah, why can't I just go there and drink directly like an animal, like a cow? Of course, you can say use straw. Like, okay, like, fine. Whatever it is, you don't have to be fixated or we don't have to be fixated on just only one way of dealing with the person. Sometimes, a lot of time when we deal with difficult people, we are only fixated on that one way we know how. And we only know that way only. And that's not helpful because in that situation, just by doing that, we are creating more problems with the person. So when we deal with people like that, forget about the, the, those ways that we know. What's the problem? We only want maybe, I only want information from him. So can I deal with him in only that way? Get the information and get out. I only want him to, 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 to do this for me. If I say this to him, even though it's not, it's not my normal way, I may have to, uh, I may even have to apologize to him. And uh, you, uh, uh, just do it and get it. Uh, you, uh, I remember sometimes I have to deal with my customer. I don't like the customer. And you know, finding a way to find an email, ding dong with all the WhatsApp uh, messages is only going to create more problems. And I don't like him, actually. I, I, I find that it's very waste of time. But I want to get something from him, isn't it? From her. And so I have lunch. I told myself, I only need to spend one hour, at the most one and a half hour lunch with him or her, and get what I want and move on. It's just like this simile. Why do I want to be fixated on only one way of doing it? All right? So this, the wisdom of the Buddha is very, very, very real here, very useful. We don't have to deal with the person only with one way that we only know how. We can be creative to deal with the people uh, in a very different way. Okay, so let's move on to the next example. Example four. Uh, this one, uh, <laughs> this one, memang, you look at this one means behavior cannot, speech cannot, and then from time to time, also no clarity of mind. You look at this, it's a hopeless, uh, uh, gone case person. After trying one, two, and three, you find that still cannot. Why? He's just very, very, very impossible. Yeah? And we will label all kind of labels on such people. We say, yeah, they're terrible, they're damn annoying, and so on. So we, we, just, we just can't somehow deal with them. And what is the Buddha's advice on this? Again, another story. Suppose a person was traveling along a road, and they were sick, great, suffering gravely ill. And it was a long way to a village, whether ahead or behind. And they didn't have any suitable food or medicine or a competent carer or someone to bring them to the neighborhood or village. Eh? So then another person traveling along the road sees them and thinks of them with nothing but compassion, kindness, and sympathy. Oh, may this person get suitable food or medicine or a competent carer or someone to bring them to the neighborhood. Eh? So otherwise, they'll be suffering, right? So in the same way, in that time, you should ignore that person's impure behavior. Just ignore everything about the person. And then you cannot find anything good about them. Never mind. Have compassion for them. Just tell yourself, what a pitiful guy. He is so pitiful. He is so, you know, 
I just pity him. He's I I and because of that, I better have compassion for him because he is suffering right now. And so people who are just impossible, they are suffering in the worst kind of suffering. So we just have to be kind to them. And may this person give up his bad conduct. May this person give up all these things, develop good things so that they will not be reborn in hell. <laughs> so that is one way. If you cannot see anything good about that person, then just have compassion for them. That's what you can do. All right. So this is the fourth one. Yeah, worst come to worst with this kind of people, just think, I don't, you may not want to deal with them. Okay. This one, impossible people, you may not want to deal with them, but you have compassion for them. Okay. Instead of going head on with them and fight them, just have that kind of compassion with them. Let's move on. So example five, yeah? person's bodily behavior and speech are pure and openness and clarity of heart from time to time is okay. Yeah? So, so what, is, what is this? So this one means, this one means the person here, yeah, he's, he's okay in every aspect. But we can resent some, such people, isn't it? They are good, they are, they are, they are, they are kind, they are generous, they are, they are clearly a mind there. But we can also envy them. We can sometimes be very jealous of them. So we should remove resentment by saying, suppose there was a lotus pond with clear, full water, clean with smooth banks, delightful and shaded by many trees. Then along comes a person struggling in the oppressive heat, weary, thirsty and parched. They plunge into the lotus pond to bathe and drink. And after emerging, they sit or lie down right there in the shade of the trees. In the same way, at that time, you should focus on that person's pure behavior. Yeah? And relying on a person who is impressive all around, the mind becomes confident. People like this, you just focus on all their good qualities and learn from them. Yeah? Don't fight them. Don't go against them. Don't need to be envious of them, jealous of them. Just allow them to inspire us. That's what it means. All right? So the Buddha's uh, uh, advice, very, very good here. Yeah? So... Okay, a few more slides, then we, then we go to the question and answer and sharing. So, I think the Buddha is one of our uh, good examples here. In the Akosa Sutta, Anguttara Nikaya 7, uh, the Buddha was staying near Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel's feeding ground. The Brahmin Bharatvaja, the root, heard a rumor that a Brahmin of the Bharatvaja clan had gone forth from the lay life to homelessness in the presence of the ascetic Gautama. So imagine the Buddha became quite a popular preacher, popular, uh, uh, what do you call that, um, uh, teacher at that point in time. And Bharatvaja is probably a Brahmin clan. And that some of the people have sort of says, okay, let's forget about what we are practicing now and go to the, the Buddha. Because the Buddha, it makes sense. He's good. He's popular. Let's go to him. Let's learn from him. And I'm sure there'll be some of them who have gone and, and, and become uh, monks in the Buddha, uh, together with the Buddha. And uh, probably uh, quite a lot of them have gone. Now, angry and displeased, this, this Bharat Vajra, the Brahmin, probably what the head of the, the, the clan, he went to the Buddha and abused and insulted him with rude, harsh words. So even the Buddha was not free from such difficult people. Difficult people came to the Buddha, had to, and the Buddha at that point in time had to deal with such a difficult person. Yeah? And somehow he was rude, he was harsh, he was insulting, and he abused the Buddha. So I'm sure he said all kinds of things. Uh, the Buddha had to take on all those things. Actually, if you look at it, uh, when people abuse us, insult us with rude, harsh words, uh, we are a lot of time reacting. Uh. I mean, the Let's learn from the Buddha. The Buddha never reacted. The Buddha, in fact, didn't even, uh, didn't even defend himself. The Buddha just, you know, most of the time our response is we defend ourselves when we are being abused, insulted, uh, 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 what we call blamed. And we have to defend ourselves. No, I didn't say that. No, I didn't do that. No, I didn't. Uh, I don't mean that. But the Buddha did not do any of those. The Buddha just said, very, very interesting. The Buddha asked question. What do you think, Brahmin? Do friends and colleagues, relatives and family members and guests still come to visit you? So the Buddha just asks question. When you see, sometimes you deal with difficult people, uh, don't need to talk so much, don't need to go and say so many things, don't need to give all your reason. Just ask them question. So when you say things like that, 
what do you mean by that? You see, when you say things like that to people, like you put people back to zero. Somehow or other, because you're not defending yourself, you're not going against them, you're asking them back a question. You said something about what I did wrong. Tell me more. Why do you say so? Why do you have that thing? Can you tell me what's the reason? Now, when you say things like that, you're not defending. You're not going against. You're just asking for clarity. Most of the time, whoever you deal with, they have to respond to you. So this Brahmin responded. Well, yeah, sometimes they do come and visit me. The Buddha asked the next question. So, do you then serve them with a variety of foods, savouries, tidbits, snacks, and whatever not? And he's, the Brahmin said, yeah, I do. <laughs> See, when you ask questions to people, sure, they have to answer. Ma, yeah? And then the next thing is, uh, but if they don't accept the Brahmin, who does it belong to? The Brahmin says, in that case, it still belongs to me. Uh, this is man, only the Buddha entered with his next thing. In the same way, Brahmin, when you abuse, harass, and attack us, and we are the ones who don't abuse, harass, and attack, we don't accept it, Brahmin. It still belongs to you. It still belongs to you. Someone who, when abused, harass, and attack, abuses, harasses, and attack in return, is said to eat the food and have a reaction to it. So when you are reacting to somebody, when you abuse back, when you defend yourself, when you attack back, you are actually eating the food offered to you. Yeah? They offer you stale food, lousy food, bad food. You eat it already. So if we don't eat that food, you don't accept, you don't react to it, it belongs to them. That's what the Buddha's advice is. Yeah. So uh, uh, conclude, when faced with a difficult person, know that it causes an it's causes and conditions. It's not you, it's not them, it's just what happens. We can choose how we respond. We already illustrated that in many examples. And we can remove by ignoring the negative qualities. Focus on the positive. Look at the person. Worst come to worst, if you cannot even see anything good about the person, just don't deal with them. Just have compassion for them. And learn from the Buddha's life example. Okay? So, lastly, uh, uh, this one is not Buddha, like this one is not Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee say, empty your mind. Uh, be formless, shapeless like water. You put water in the cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put water in the teapot, it becomes the teapot. Water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Yeah? So I think we've given you a lot of examples. I think now is the time to hand it back to uh, uh, Bobby and... Uh, and uh, let's have a bit of a sharing, maybe discussion or question and answers. Thank you, Brother Niwan. Okay, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Brother Niwan, for the wonderful sharing. I think uh, other than the uh, voice part, which can be improved uh, by, uh, you know, maybe not moving too far away from your mic or using a headset, uh, I think it was very good presentation, yeah. very, very lively. Okay. Thanks. Good sir. Okay, Lots I'll do my best with the vocals. Uh, yeah. Okay. We have, uh, our time limit has been lifted up and uh, there's a second session starting up in two minutes time. So shall we continue here or we lock off and start a new meeting? You can just or, continue here, like, no need to. No just, need continue, to yeah. just, just ignore the second meeting. Uh. So we pass it back to Niwan for the Q&A. So uh, now yeah, so, you, you may so unmute yourself for Q&A or just chat. Yeah, we can take questions or sharing from anyone. I think uh, it's good that we can have some sharing. Um, if you're not clear about certain things, maybe I move too fast in certain parts, you can ask me to share again. And I think it will be good for you to also share and ask questions related to actual, you know, examples of how you are dealing with somebody very difficult, you know, in life. So, okay. Um, can, we, can we hear from you now from the floor? Feel free to unmute yourselves, okay? You can ask a in the chat as well if you don't want to uh, uh, you know, ask it very openly. Lah. Niwan, Brother Niwan? Yes, yes, Angeline, yes. Uh, can you go back to the third, the last three slides that what, uh, give it back to them, that one? Um, yeah, could you please explain that again? Wait, let me share the slide again. Uh, you need to, okay, which one? 
Hang on, eh? Ada uh, slide number 20, 20. Is it? Is it the Buddha's uh, example? Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. What is it? Which Buddha's one about this? It's like that. What you give it back to them, or something like that. Did you did mention just now? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. What's your question here? Yeah, can you explain that one? It does. It still belongs to you. This I don't accept it. Yeah. Okay. Meaning what? Uh, All right. So the question is, what do you, you what do you mean by you don't accept it? Okay, I think the Buddha uses this as one of the simile and an that? example to to tell us that. Whatever people have said to you, did to you, um, you can choose to to abuse back, attack back, even defend yourself. And I think if we do that a lot of time, you are actually participating in whatever that person is doing to you. I think if you can find this in very simple example when you are at work. When you know your customer or your colleague, they said something that's uh, uh, somehow accuse you of something, and if we somehow uh, de try to defend ourselves, giving all kind of reason, shouldn't be like this. You shouldn't say that to me. I I don't accept it. I I don't think it's like that. And you somehow get involved in that because, and, and some people they just like it, you know, because they 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 enjoy it when you re have a reaction to them. They say, aha, you know, uh, there it is. I, 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 you uh, you have fallen into my trap. You know, people are like this, uh, especially if you're in corporate life, you understand. There are people who like to lay traps everywhere. They are, they are, they are like, you know, they, they, put, they put all these uh, traps and, and mind, mind fields and all that waiting for you to pick it up. They throw the balls everywhere waiting for you to pick it up and you're just picking it up. So when you get involved with it, when you defend yourself, when you attack back, when you try to explain too much, you get into a situation where where they where they are, you know, you are participating in that. So when you say we don't accept it, I I don't I don't I don't accept. And you 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 know whatever people say to us, we don't have to accept everything. I mean, why do we want to accept whatever they say to us? The the reason why we we have a reaction to that is because. They, they they attack us and they, they tell me they tell you you are so stupid you know how can you how can you do something like that the minute you think how can I be so how can you say I'm so stupid you just call yourself stupid another another few times so so why do we want to to do that so when it, when we don't accept those things it just belong to them they are the one having the problem they are the one having the the, the issue not me uh, it's not as easy to practice this because. A lot of time we still have emotions. We we get hijacked, we get emotional, we get a lot of um, uh, uh, anger and frustration, and it, it just consumes us. You know, it makes us very agitated and irritated, and all that. We we sometimes cannot help ourselves because the Buddha can do that because he has a lot of uh, calmness and stillness in his mind, and I, so it's, a, it's it's important to, at that point to practice a lot more stillness calmness not to be involved in the whole drama of things so watch the drama don't be in the drama watch the politics don't be in the politics be politically savvy don't be political and that's what it means by this simile you know so so i think it's it looks simple but it's actually very profound it, it means that we have a choice not to be reactive not to be too um sensitive sometimes to what people say to us. I know it's not easy because sometimes uh, if strangers say to us, it's not too bad. It's when people close to us say certain things that are very, very un uh, unpleasant to us. That's where we sometimes get very, very chased off and we, we somehow get very uh, uh, involved with the whole thing. How can you say that? Why you say those things? I give my example. I have, I'm in a neighborhood WhatsApp group. Uh, one of my WhatsApp group uh, is in the is a Rukun Tetangga lah, you know, the neighborhood one. And somehow they, they uh, one of the things that, one of the member there, somehow we don't know who it is because we never see each other before. But everything people post, from time to time, you just say, hey, don't post so, so, un, so such irrelevant things. What kind, of, uh, what kind of stupid posting is this? Then after that, he will say, this is something, you know, uh, then, then the other person will say, oh, no, I'm just posting here for sharing, ma. 
And then he says, you want to share, you share elsewhere. Yeah? We are not here uh, about it. So somebody posted something about uh, water shortage. And then he will say something like, hey, why? Uh, this is not, uh, what they call this, not Ayes Langor. This is not Shabbos. You shouldn't post here. Go and ask Shabbos yourself. So he said those things in the WhatsApp group. And you find that people get involved with the argument. They say back, no, ma. Uh, I just share only, ma. I didn't say it, ma. How come you go and say that about me? How dare? And then he go and say something else. No, no, no. I want you to be focused on this and so on. So they go back and forth with all these things. So, and it's just a WhatsApp group. So what I'm saying is, we have a choice not to accept any of it. We can choose to ignore it. Words come to us, just exit the group. Like, no, if it's, if it's such irritating thing for what, you want to get involved. So uh, me and my dirty, uh, me, me and my naughty fingers was, uh, was uh, saying something to the person by saying, not to him, but to the group, by saying, uh, you know, I say uh, something like, um, well, at least, you know, because he, the last post he said, you, 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 you share these, these things here for what? You know, uh, so that was the last posting. So I responded by saying, well, something to talk about during MCO law, uh, no need to be so serious law. So uh, uh, anyway, it's good that we all can share. Uh, at least somebody know about the water shortage or something like that. So I just, I just diffused the whole situation by saying, you know, it's okay, right? So we don't have to accept everything that people throw at us. I don't think it's wise to always just think that we must respond to everything. Sometimes it's best to keep our mouth shut. That's what I, I read the, the simile here. Yeah. So I hope I've given <laughs> that justice to that question, Angeline. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so Kihoto, uh, how do we respond if someone attack us in WhatsApp chat group? Stay silent, ignore, practice compassion. I think you have answered. Okay. If I've answered, then I've answered. Uh. Uh, WhatsApp groups are sometimes very, very, uh, it's, it's one of the worst communication channels you can see because it's, it's, it's a one-way thing. Yeah? We, are, we, are, we are in a one-way traffic in the WhatsApp. We don't see the person's face. Uh, we only see the words. And, uh, according to a study done um, in communication, there are three components in communication. Okay? Uh, one component of communication is the words themselves. All right, then the words comprise how many percent of communication? According to the study done, words comprise uh, in the total communication, the words themselves, they are 7% of communication. Yeah, 7% of communication is words. The other 38% of communication is the uh, how you say the tone of voice. Yeah, the tone of voice is the other 38%. And uh, the other uh, 50 over percent, yeah, 50 over percent is, uh, is uh, what do you call that? Um, uh, the body language. Yeah? So in other words, 93% of communication has nothing to do with what we say. You know? uh, yeah? it's, it's actually 93% of communication is actually, uh, what do you call that? It's not even the words. So seven percent only the words. So that's that's somehow the the, the, the study is done uh, may not be as accurate, but you find you find that WhatsApp only seven percent. We are only receiving seven percent of the intended message. So that's why I say WhatsApp groups are not a very good communication uh, channel because you can never understand what is the real meaning of the intention of those words. And sometimes, despite all your intention to want to put it in a very clear manner, somehow or other in the WhatsApp group, somebody will misunderstand you. Somebody's bound to have a different opinion about it. Yeah? So I think, I think this is where I, I, I would like to, to, to point out. Uh, don't rely on WhatsApp to get your point across. If you think things are not getting anywhere, if you think the WhatsApp is not getting anywhere, call the person up and just talk to the person because that's not going to get you much. So you will find that the difficulty vanishes the minute you speak with that person. And of course, now you can do WhatsApp call in a video call or somehow. You can talk to two, three percent at the same time. So you have no excuse. But many of us choose to just hide behind the WhatsApp, uh, say those things in the group and create a lot of sometimes um, uh, reactions. Yeah? So that's what I, I feel. So don't make things more difficult than it already is. And that's what I, I feel we should we should do. 
in practical sense. Yeah. Okay, Akosa Suta, Sanyutan Nikarana Angutara. Okay, I, I take, take, thank you for that clarification, she's saying. Uh, thank you very much. We'll, we'll make the correction. I must have uh, did a typo there. Okay, any other questions? If not, uh, Bobby, is there any other things? Uh, Brother Niwen. Yes. Uh, I'm Daniel. Huh? Yes, Daniel. How are you? Fine, fine. Uh, I have a question. Uh, sure. pre uh, previously, I've, uh, I faced with uh, my work uh, supervisor, sort of like my oh. senior lead. So, uh, yeah. uh, according to when, when I just joined that company, right, I heard a lot of like uh, stories and also some uh, bad things about her. So I didn't like uh, believe and then I just like continue doing my work. Anyway. But after some times, I start to see her true color. So sometimes, right, uh, uh, she is kind of like, uh, like a two-faced person. Two-faced person where sometimes like what she say, for example, uh, she will say that anything you don't know, you can come to me, I will clarify or anything you need my perspective on certain things or you need my verification, I will do it for you. But after that, when I go to her, like asking for clarification, clarification, then she will like give a lot of kind of reasons that she will say, I'm very busy, I'm very busy, can't you see? But she will say in a very, uh, a very uh, bad tone, like a uh, very rude tone, like, can't you see I'm busy? Uh, can you uh, come other time? And then she will like tend to raise her voice. And then like, because the office that I'm in is an op open, open concept, where everyone is sitting in the same office there where everyone can see each other. So for example, when I sit at this place, she will like shout from her place. So everyone can actually see it. So I feel that it's uh, very inappropriate. And also, uh, uh, sometimes where it's quite difficult to talk to her. I mean, like when you talk to her, she will like actually uh, raise her ego. And then she will like, like sort of like uh, challenge you, you say, and then, Every time when I ask her back any question or what, she will go like on MC or all this kind of thing. So it's very hard to talk to her in, in the sense of like, sometimes you are, you are afraid because like she's your head and then, you know, and you, you might get like scolded, those kind of things. So like, how do I like deal with this kind of uh, people? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Daniel, right? Uh, Daniel, for your question. Yeah, I'm well uh, dealing with boss, uh, dealing with your superior. Uh, that itself is an art by itself, and it's an art and a science by itself. Um, I think there are no straightforward answers to this. But I think one important thing, I mean, I can give a very general answer here. I, I may not know uh, the situation very detailed. I mean, sometimes these things require us to understand her as a person, you know, this boss that you have. Where what kind of person she is, uh, what is her, her, her motivation, what is her personality, how is her normal behavior, that will help a lot in trying to answer this, this in a more direct and maybe more exact way. But I think if, if in general, if you look at dealing with bosses and your superior, especially with the superior, is somebody that is a little bit hard to get across. Um, you know, that, and I think that there are many reasons why they are like this. Uh, number one, it could be them. There, there are people like this. They, they are, could be somebody very insecure. Maybe I don't know uh, that because they are so insecure, they, they, they need to look for approvals you know, from others. And and sometimes when they behave in a manner that says, "I'm very busy. I don't have no time for this," and so on, it may be a signal that they want to make themselves feel more important. You know. But this is just my speculation. It may not be true. But I think whatever it is, when you deal with bosses especially, you need to ask yourself this very important question. What is my big picture? What is the thing that I really want to get out of this? If, 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 if what I want to get out of this is I want to do this work better. I want to make my life easier. I would like to get something uh, so that I can get approval to proceed with the next thing. Uh, we need to ask yourself, is that what I want? If that's what I want, 
Then the next step is, first of all, we need to understand our boss. So I think a lot of people in corporate especially struggle because you don't understand the boss. And you need to, I think one of the things I always advise my clients even, your job is not to fight your boss. Your job is not to go against, your job is not to uh, sometimes uh, uh, do what you feel or what you think is right. Your job at the end of the day is to satisfy your boss. And how do you satisfy the, the boss? Is to first of all, understand what she wants. And what she wants is sometimes you need to catch if, if she's the type of person who don't like to be, uh, you know, who don't like to be uh, asked a question in public. I know, I, I, mean, I know some people, some bosses, they don't like to be asked a question in public. They don't like to be confronted in public uh, because they are exposed. They want you to go to them privately. And then you do that. Or some people, they don't like to be caught by surprise. They want everything to be in black and white. You know, and sometimes they, you just have to deal with them on a black and white uh, way. Uh, some people, they, they, they somehow, they, they don't give you straight answers. They give you very, very wishy-washy answers. So what do you do with people like this? First of all, take care of yourself. If you deal with people who are very wishy-washy and they're your boss or more, they don't give you answers. They don't even give you a proper email. And what you do, you should better send them an email and protect yourself. Give them an email, give them a very black and white, whatever has been discussed, uh, dear so-and-so, uh, this morning, thank you for meeting me. We had a discussion. According to your advice, uh, according to your advice and your, 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 you have said that, you know, you want to uh, do this and number one is this, number two is this. And then uh, we'll proceed with this. And you should email. And sometimes it's important to, 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 to incorporate, especially you need to do things like that so that you are clearer, you safeguard yourself, you don't create more problems for yourself and you allow you know, uh, the, 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 the thing to move ahead. It's not about being right. It's not about being, uh, you know, it's not even about doing the right thing. <laughs> it's about doing what is suitable at that point in time, just like the Buddha simile. Uh, don't have to always think I must drink water from the cup. I can drink water by just drinking from the puddle itself. So why do I want to bother with so many of these things? So that is a, just a very general example of how you deal with uh, uh, bosses. Lah. But in addition to that, Daniel, I think uh, for any one of you here, when you deal with in corporate life, uh, if you detect that the boss could be somebody who is like this, uh, put it everything down in black and white. Uh, make it more clearer, make it more uh, simple so that everything is recorded. Yeah? Try not to go into whoever is right. Uh, try to go into what you want to get out of this. I want to get the approval. I want to get a go ahead. I want to get a green light. Get that and get out. And that's my advice when you deal with difficult bosses. Lah. Okay, so I hope I answered the question. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Brother Nguyen. Yeah. Any other questions? Let me look at the, okay. <clears throat> uh, any other questions from the rest of you? Um, yes, you can help. unmute it. Yes. What is this? Oh, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, Brother Lou, we can hear you. Please go ahead, Brother Lu. Uh, you have to unmute and just proceed with your comment or question. Sorry, it was wrongly pressed. No question. Okay, please. go ahead, please. Oh, no question. Okay. <laughs> so, accidentally unmute. Uh, Another question here. Thank you for your kindness to share besides your example of hard word dealing scenario. Share a scenario where during communication with others feel we are stubborn and we feel they are stubborn also when both parties have different opinion. Thank you. Uh, okay, this is from who is IP? Okay. <coughs> IP, 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 do you have a can I just get your, your name here if I try? Okay, never mind. I, I'll just answer the question since it's being asked. So it says, uh, besides uh, dealing with a hard word, a harsh word, I think harsh word, uh, during uh, 
uh, some people feel they are stubborn. We also feel we are stubborn. So different people have different opinion. Uh, so how do we deal with it? I think differing opinions are something inevitable. I think as long as you have two people dealing with each other, you will have two different opinions. That's quite normal. And uh, of course, if the opinions are not too far off, you can still come to some understanding. But if the opinions are very far off, it can lead to sometimes very difficult situations. It may even lead to arguments, conflicts, and so on. So I think we need to be very clear that if in that situation, what is my role? What do I have to get? And what do I have to lose out of this situation? I think we need to be very clear. If it is a dealing with a WhatsApp group and it's a, it's a bunch of strangers inside there, sometimes do I even need to give my opinion there? Sometimes maybe no need because it's just a WhatsApp group. I, I don't have to get in in that conversation. But if it is somebody that perhaps I need to deal with at work, for example, or my neighborhood, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, Rukun Tatanga, or in BGF where I have to get a project going and I have to deal with that person because somehow or other they put us together, we have to work as a team. We have a different opinion and a different way how to handle without celebration, how to handle, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call this Zoom meeting. Uh, for example, we have a situation like that where we have, and, and sometime or other, that person is, in our mind, very stubborn. Okay, first of all, we need to look at the whole situation. I think when we label the person stubborn, that itself is not helpful. Uh, when we have labels on people, it's not helpful. He's stubborn, he's difficult, he is problematic, he is irritating. When we start labeling things like that, it's already not helpful. So I think what we can do in such situations is remove the labels. He's not difficult. He's different. He's different. He has a different way of looking at things. She is of a different opinion. She comes from a different background. She doesn't have the same, she doesn't share the same, uh, what do you call that, um, uh, uh, upbringing as me. She has a different opinion compared to me. The many will label it differently we can have a chance to see differently at, from, from that angle. Then I think it helps first round. Once we label it differently, immediately we remove those words that trigger, uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, uh, uh, emotional things, uh, bad feelings. So why don't we just remove the label? Then we go into the other things as to how to deal with them. Okay, let's look at them. Is their conduct okay? Is their behavior okay? He says, speech, okay. All right, maybe his speech in this part, he's not so good, but other things is okay. You know? So can I, can I deal with that part that I can deal with? Find a common ground. Find a way that is common that we can both look at it. And one of the things that we can do that, one of the ways that we can deal with that is by having empathy. Yeah, empathy doesn't mean I agree with you. <laughs> I don't agree with you, but I can know where you're coming from. So you can ask questions like, uh, you have, I have a slightly different opinion from you, but before I give my opinion about this, let me hear from you, yeah, Brother Niwen. Uh, why, why do you have this opinion? Eh? Just help me to understand, what do you mean by this? You say we such celebration must be doing this way. Uh, uh, you want it to be, to be using uh, uh, this format. Uh, so help me to understand, why is this format important? What's so good about this format? Can you, can, you, can, you, can you enlighten me? Help me to understand. So when you, when you say things like to people, you're, you're not going against them. Neither are you agreeing with them. You don't have to agree with them. You just say, I just want to understand where you are coming from. It doesn't mean I have to follow you. I just want to understand you. I think that itself will help. At the end of the day, you may still want to be stubborn and you say, okay, I still want to do it my way. But because you have given an opportunity to understand the other person where they are coming from, you may find another way. <laughs> and you may find another, maybe may uh, another approach that can be, uh, what do you call that, um, can be uh, uh, beneficial for both parties. And if you can't, so what? You know, you, you still have, you, you, the show will still go on anyway. 
you know. So the whole idea is don't get into situation where we are in conflict, where we are in a, a, a problematic situation. Just try to understand we are uh, differing opinion. Okay, so so remove the labels that will help. Okay, so okay we have. Um, yeah, so we have BGF, CU, okay, so a bit of advertisement there, which I won't, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so, so I think, I think that's my, 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 my sharing here, lah, yeah, so, uh, right, um, Brother Bobby, is there anybody else with a, a question? How much time do we have, Bobby, before we close? Another five minutes. Okay, I think, I think, I think that's enough, lah, so, is there anybody last final question to ask if anyone or a final sharing? Um, I must invite my Sifu here, Chi Sing and uh, Dato Sri uh, to, to share something since they are here. <laughs> uh, uh, brother Chi Sing, uh, uh, brother uh, Dato Victor, is there anybody, anything you want to say? These are all my seniors, my Sifu, they are all here listening to my talk. I'm very grateful, very happy. These these are the ones that got yeah, that got me on my on my Dhamma talk, especially Dato. Uh, uh, got me on my Dhamma Duta mission from my early the early years as a as a as a as a student even. So, uh, yeah. yes, any words from you? Uh? Yes, Nevan. Uh, thank you so much for your talk this morning. And what I like about the talk is that you have actually taken the solutions from the sutras itself, right? Very often when people talk, they give a lot of their opinions. They read from here and there but there is nothing from the Buddha's words. So what I like about the talk is that you're actually using the examples, even in the sutras, and how we can actually apply this in our daily life. Now, when you get, talk about the Dutiya uh, Agatha Pati Vinaya Sutta, it strikes me, just from the example, how difficult the life of the monk must have been, right? Especially the one which really struck me was when the... Um, uh, when you're really thirsty and uh, you don't have water anywhere, but then on the foot of a cow's, uh, the hooves of a cow that is in the soft ground, there is a little bit of water, how to drink the water. I say, oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, no, is that how people have to live? Uh, because you need to understand that the life of a Shramana, in India, there are actually two major traditions. One is the Brahmana tradition, and that is, you know, the traditional where you follow the caste system and all that. The Shramana is the one that, that breaks away from that. And they're the mendicants. They're actually people who wanders around and live some arms food. Because they, they are not householders, they live from arms food. And it must be very difficult. Many of them, I think, have got sick. They drink water, even from a lotus pond and all that. It struck me how difficult it is. But I think the meaning of the sutta is that let us not be distracted by negative things, you know, whether it within a person's, the way he behaves, he could be really rough, we do not like the way he dresses, or the way he speaks, you know, he's not polished in his words, or even, uh, you got, or even the, uh, you know, the, his state of mind. We focus on what is good, because sometimes he could be rough and tough, speaks in a rough manner, but please focus on his heart, because he might have really a good heart. Let us listen to what he has to say. And sometimes, like what you, what you mentioned, if a person seems to be perfect in every way, that doesn't prevent us from being jealous sometimes. We might actually be filled with envy or some preconceived ideas that we have. You might be okay. Body, body okay. Actions all okay. Speech, fine. And is uh, quality of mind very clear and all that. But sometimes we might have some kind of a feeling of unhappiness about him. But put that aside and focus what is good. I think that is the meaning of the sutra. And the second one was that you don't necessarily have to be reactive to what you hear from people. And that is the, the quotation of how there was this Brahmin. And of course, those days, um, there were many Brahmins that were not happy with the Buddha because he was so popular. He was supported by King Dibisara. And uh, the example that you gave was really in the bamboo grove, that is in Rajagaha, where the Buddha spent rainy seasons there. He's his host and, uh, you know, he was being invited by King Dibisara. So obviously, with all the support and such a popular speaker, there were many groups of people who were jealous of him. And there was this Brahmin who actually went to the Buddha and started scolding him and you know, using all the bad words. But the Buddha remained very calm and he's not reactive to that. So that is the, um, that's the example that you gave, which is, which is, which is really uh, very good. I think this, this morning's talk has been very useful. Um, 
obviously, uh, sometimes when we deal, uh, especially with meeting and having been a kind of a president of Buddhist society and also having worked with a ministry where you have people with all the different opinions. And sometimes when you have a meeting, especially in the brainstorming, you've got people with different ideas. Um, sometimes we have to check ourselves that we must not dismiss an idea because of our preconception. If you are trying to look for an alternative, if a person gives a completely different point of view, don't cut the person off and say, what a silly idea. Just open the ground, suspend judgment and say, okay, let us see how we can use that idea. And sometimes an idea that seems to be completely way out is actually a creative solution if you're prepared to give it a chance. And when you do that, later on, your group will have a lot of trust for you because they will think that, oh, you're a good leader. You just don't cut a person off because of your preconceived ideas. You give people a chance. Try to listen, try to search what is good about that idea that we can use. Can we use that idea? It might be like off tangent, but are there certain good things that we can use and build on that and later on coming up with a creative solution? So for me, I, I have also used that actually in, in dealing with trying to find sol solutions when working with a committee. So please don't be too dismissive and be prepared to suspend judgment and give a person a chance. And also what Nguyen says that, you know, sometimes even if our opinion is different from a person, don't react first. Just try to find out where is the person coming from. And the uh, solution that you, you said was good, to say, okay, I might have a slightly different opinion, but I just like to understand why you're saying what you say, you know, so that I can appreciate what you're saying. And then maybe able to, uh, to adjust the way, you know, uh, I speak, the, the way I present my view. Okay, so this has been very useful. Thank you, Niwan. Thank you. Thank you, Dato, for your kind words. Uh, I think thank you for your supplementary teachings. I think, uh, uh, I think in the you know I've always been uh, very inspired by Dato Sri's uh, you know uh, uh, insight of things. So, uh, yeah. Any last questions? Yeah, I think if not, um, I, I I would like to. to uh, uh, yeah, I'd like to hand it back to Brother Bobby. Brother Bobby, over back to you. But I think just one last thing I want to say is. Uh, uh, to everybody, uh, I, I, I coined a new term during this MCO period, and that's, uh, that's called uh, Be Still and Allow the World to Heal. Uh, I think that, that one I coined, my own, that's my own quotation. So I, I think this is the time where we have a chance to be still, even in, in moments of, 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 of trying time like this. Uh, we have a chance to not do anything uh, and to be still. So stillness helps when we deal with people. Stillness of the, the mind helps when we are dealing with especially very difficult situations or very uh, sometimes irritating people in our life. Uh, so that will help quite a bit. Yeah. So I would encourage every one of you, please practice meditation, attend Dato Sri's uh, Metta. Uh, that will help us to have the kind of, uh, we call it uh, the, 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 the engine, yeah? uh, or rather the, the immunity, yeah? uh, to have the immunity to difficulties in, in especially irritating people or whatever you call them uh. so so okay um I, I think i think that's that's in general what i want to share uh i want to share the suttas because i think the the the, the, the there's a treasure trove of of stories and examples from the buddha's life itself and the buddha's words themselves we don't have to go very far the, the, the answers are all there so let's look at the buddha as one of the exemplary teachers and leaders uh, don't have to go very far. The answers are all there. Okay. So with that, I thank everybody. Um, I I like to now hand it back to Brother Bobby for uh, the uh, yeah for this. Yeah. Thank Thank you, Brother Newman, for your wonderful sharing. We would thank you, Brother Newman, for your wonderful sharing. Uh, just uh, for everyone's uh, information, BJF has a flagship program which. Uh, it's a Sutta retreat by Acham Brahmali, which we have it every year around uh, February to March time frame, usually after Chinese New Year. So uh, do look out for that, where uh, some of the suttas that uh, Brother Niwan covered just now was uh, covered by Acham Brahmali. And uh, also, we are having some Visa ex uh, programs online. We will be through Facebook Live and through Zoom as well. So we'll be having Vesak Eve as well as Vesak Day. 
Brother Chi Seng, would you like to mention um, anything about the BESAP programs? Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, not much at this moment. Uh, do watch out for our, our advertisement and then do join us during the WISA time, uh, WISA, WISA Eve and WISA Day. You will also have a picture of a puja, uh, light, oil lighting, uh, uh, lighting, and as well as a hymn singing. Uh. So do join us later on. Uh, yeah, today we saw that there's a lot of people, about almost about 30 plus people. Okay, and uh, hopefully you can actually share this to more people so that uh, uh, your friends and so on, they can join either through Zoom or through uh, Facebook Live or Facebook uh, uh, Watch Party. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Brother Shizeng, Brother Niwan, and everyone for attending. Uh, if you like to view the videos again, I'll be posting it on uh, BGF YouTube channel so you can look up from there. Okay, so till we meet the next time, let's uh, sadhu everyone. Bye. Uh, Dr. Dr. can I give you a call right after this? Uh, I have to discuss something with you. <laughs>